Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 14th Flutter tutorial. Uh, we are getting into the advanced Dart topics. Remember, we have to learn Dart before we can really dive into Flutter. Um, today we're going to talk about asynchrony support or asynchronous programming. What in the heck is this? That is even a mouthful to say. Um, hmm. I'm sure everybody listening to this has had somebody tell them, hey, do this, but while you're doing that, also do this, and then maybe do this, 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 and this. It's really multitasking. Um, asynchronous programming is different than multi-threaded programming um, under the hood on how the computer actually works with the code. Won't get too deep into that, how that works, but just understand that asynchronous programming allows your code to run asynchronously, meaning at the same time as your other code. And you can do some really cool stuff with this. So let's just dive right in here and let's create a new project and next let's call this multi tasking may help if I pull my keyboard out a little bit here and honestly I wasn't really gonna cover this because I'm kind of chomping at the bit to actually get into flutter but it is a part of dart and it's going to be heavily used a lot of the IO functions uh, work with uh, futures and streams objects and in the words of Ripley from the movie Aliens uh, you started this show me everything so if you haven't seen that movie it's like one of the best movies of all time anyways let's just dive right in here now if you've never worked with asynchronous programming reading the official Dart documentation can be a little bit confusing and not really for the faint of heart although it's actually broken down very well it's just a very complex topic and it's in a very advanced topic and even seasoned programmers make some very bad mistakes. So I apologize in advance if this tutorial has some mistakes and I'm sure everybody on YouTube will point them out. <laughs> I have to chuckle when I say that because they do point them out. All right, so, so the first thing we need to do is we need to import Dart async. And you notice how that has Dart colon async. It's in the past, we've done uh, just a raw import. We import a file, and we've imported um, libraries and stuff. But Dart, whenever you see that Dart colon, that means it's part of the core framework, if you will, or the Dart libraries. Now, I should note that everything in Dart is a library. Even this program we're working on now is a library. But that is how you import something directly out of Dart. So we have to kind of understand some things before we can really dive in here. So I'm going to start with a very simple example and we're going to call this future. And notice how that took a generic type, which we just covered in a previous tutorial. And call this the long wait. All right, so already we notice some big differences here from what we've worked on in the past. Let's just finish this out real quick. Int i equals zero. i less than, let's just say five. And then i plus plus. So we're going to increment that. And then we're going to just print out the prefix and the current number. And then at the very end of this, we're going to just return true. Some things you need to understand. What's going on under the hood? A, you cannot use a sync without this import. You will get a glaring mistake here. Let's just cut that. See how suddenly print undefined class future. And if I take that out, that'll start lighting up. And so first step is you've got to import the sync library. The second step is that your functions and methods will have to be treated a little bit different. I keep saying functions, but they're actually called methods. Um, to treat a little bit differently. You won't actually return a boolean. You're going to return what's called a future that wraps around the boolean value that you're returning. Now, what does that really mean? You have to do that because of the way the code is actually executed. And let's just do this. Let's say
now we're going to print, whoops. Nothing too snazzy about this. It looks like it'll just run, right? So let's actually grab this and run it and see what happens here. Notice how it says starting done, then it says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now wait a minute. If we look at the code, it says print, do this, which is actually this guy right here, then print done. But if you notice, it's saying starting done. So it's going from here to here and skipping this guy altogether. It's not actually skipping it. It's doing it in parallel. Um, this just takes longer to execute than this print statement does. So that's why it says starting done. But it's actually happening asynchronously, aka pretty much at the same time. Now, as you can imagine, that can lead to some very big problems if you're expecting things to be in a certain order. And we're going to cover how to do that. But I wanted you to understand that we're not actually getting the Boolean value. We're getting a future, meaning we're going to return a Boolean value or whatever we put into this generic template here. So to get that Boolean value, you have to say bool, ret, whatever we want to make it equal. And we're going to use the await keyword. So what this will do is it will say, hey, this is an async function. You have to be in an async function to call an async function. Uh, as crazy as that sounds, it just needs to know. Um, let's actually test that. Yeah, see, suddenly a wait lights up and says, eh, not going to run. So you've got to be in an async function. And the await keyword will actually, well, pretty self-explanatory, it will await this to be completed. So it's going to say starting. It's going to await for that to be completed. Once that's done, it's going to unwrap that future object. It's going to get that little value there and shove it into this one right here. Shove it right into that variable and then hand it off to our program and then it'll say done. And we're actually not really using this, but I kind of wanted to show you how to get the variable back out of there. Um, so let's, we can actually, let's just print this out. Just so that you can see there is an actual value and not a future object. See, now you can see how it says starting, and then we've got 0 through 4, and then the Boolean value, and then we're done. So that is how you would work with that. Now, there is a bit of an easier way. Um, I say easier. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It's just personal taste, really. Uh, void, and we're going to say test then. Man, this keyboard's really ticking me off here. Yes, in case you're wondering, it's the same keyboard I was having problems with a few weeks ago. All right, so we're going to go starting. And through the magic of copy and paste here. Pretty much the same structure. We are not using the async keyword here. So we're in what's called synchronous code, and we want to run asynchronous code. Well, we have two options. We either turn our little function into an asynchronous function like we've done before, or what we can do is and we want to say then ah Get in there. And this will take a little bit of explaining. And this is why some people love this and some people hate this. Let's actually shove this in here and see what happens. All right, so when we run this, you can see oh, it says starting done. So we think that we've already screwed up, but then it says 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, done waiting. I left this done in here so that you could see what would happen. It will actually treat this, actually this, as synchronous code, meaning it's going to do the then. Now, I understand that makes no sense. What does it mean by do the then? Code execution starts here, says 
do this long wait. It goes up, evaluates this, and says, oh, it's an async function. Good. I can just run this in parallel. So it's going to asynchronously run that. While that's running, it's going to jump down here and go, okay, we're back into synchronous code. So start, done, and then this executes off to the side at the same time. That is where the then method comes in. What then does is it says, do the asynchronous code, then when you're done, run this code. That gets a little confusing. Some people love that, some people hate it. Uh, personally, I prefer this method because it's very clear to see what's going on. However, you can do some really cool things with this. So let's actually do this. And we're going to just say, well, let's just grab this whole thing rather than type all this out. I'm getting old and cranky here, so. All right, so now what we've got here is, uh, let's actually do this a little differently. So we're going to grab the future object out here. Notice how we're not grabbing a Boolean, we're grabbing the future object. And from here, we are just going to say, let's run this and just make sure this works as expected before we really dive into it. All right, so it's starting, done, and then we've got chains blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do here, and this is where I always screw up, and that's why I wanted to kind of do this. And we're going to grab this, and we're going to say bang, bang, done, chain one, chain two, chain three. So let's run this again, see what happens here. Now you can see how you can actually say, hey, once you're done, do chain one, do chain two, do chain three. So you can do things in a specific order after the asynchronous code executes. So this could be like um, calculate the sun, moon, and stars, and then put it into a database, and then log it, and then dial into a server and spit out some value or something. So you can do what's called chaining, and that's why I said chains. Um, let's just get rid of chain here and just say done one, done two, done three. Done, done, done. Anyways, that was lame. If I edited my videos, I would edit that right out of the video. That was really lame. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually test waiting on multiple asynchronous calls. And this is pretty advanced and this can get kind of nuts. But the syntax for it is just dead simple. That's why I'm going to add this in here. And notice how we are back to the async. And we're going to say print. And we're just going to say future f1 equal. Just copy and paste this a few times here. So we've got our three asynchronous calls here, and let's actually comment this out so we can see it work in real time. And you see how there it goes. One, two, three. Um, that is how that's going. Now, this does not necessarily guarantee that it's going to be in order. It may not be one, two, three. Uh, these are each independent, distinct calls. So it may be two, three, one, or three, one, two, or whatever permutation here. So what we want to do is we want to know when all three of those are actually completed. Um, you see how we got starting done. We want done way down at the bottom here. So what we have to do is we have to say await oh, future 
and then future itself has a wait call in it. And notice how it wants multiple futures. So we're just going to, you guessed it, we're going to wait for those. And once they're done, it'll print it out. Bang. So starting, and then there's one, two, three, and then done. That's pretty neat. So just be aware that um, there is a lot of code, uh, especially IO code, that is, is synchronous. And you'll have to really learn how to work with that. But it's really not that hard. Um, to be brutally honest, some other languages, the syntax in like JavaScript, for example, is very similar. But for whatever reason, JavaScript makes me want to just rip the keyboard out of the wall and throw it across the room. I don't know why. Dart, however, is just it's very streamlined and very elegant. I really like the way it works. So that, in a nutshell, is uh, asynchronous programming. It is by no means the lexicon of asynchronous programming. This would be just like a high-level primer, just so we can start working with Flutter. Um, you will run into issues, and you may have spotted one or two bugs in this little program here. So if you find the bugs, uh, definitely go out to GitHub, uh, modify the source, commit it, and I will approve it. And we'll go on from there. Speaking of, if you found this educational and entertaining, visit my website, voidrealms.com, for the source code for this and all other tutorials. And I keep saying it, there is a Void Realms Facebook group with 1,700 other programmers out there, all walks of life, every language you can imagine. I'm constantly asking questions out there. It's a great resource for other programmers. That's it. Thank you for watching.